Welcome guys. I'm super excited because today I'm going to reveal my new fireball welding table. Now this table is really special because I've been working on it for four years. I set out with the design intent to make my best welding table. Last year I did a welding table review video which I accumulated all the best welding tables in the industry and I tested them. There's some big gaps in the welding table world. It left me with some desires that don't exist. So after reviewing all of them, I sat down to the drawing board and I came up with this table. And I made a checklist of all the most important things to me that I think would be really valuable. So let's talk about the first one and that is the material. I decided to make this table out of gray cast iron. All the other tables are made out of steel and when you make stuff out of steel, they're basically like a big rubber band. They have a lot of flex and twist to them. They're kind of spongy. No matter how you build them, they have a level of accuracy that's really hard to maintain, especially when you're trying to hit that aerospace accuracy of two thousandths of an inch in two feet. So gray cast iron is the best bet for that. And if you look at any lathe or milling machine, they're all made from cast iron. Why? Because they're extremely rigid. The second benefit of gray cast iron is that it repels weld spatter really easily. So I knew that was my material of choice. Let's talk about the problem of size. Most of the tables were four by eight. So I asked myself, why are they four by eight? Is there a reason behind it? And nobody could really give me an answer. But what I suspect is that the material that they started with the table was four by eight. So that poses a problem for us welders is our material also is four by eight, which covers up the whole surface. And the four foot dimension is really common when building gates, railings. So why have a table that's exactly the same size as our material? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Much like a football field, you have some sidelines for the players to stand on. We need that same thing in our welding table. This is four foot six by eight foot six. This gives me an extra row around the perimeter that allows you to put your stakes, your clamps and everything on the outside and still gives you room to put a true four by eight sheet of plywood or steel right on top of it. And it's actually 20% larger because of that. So it just gives you a little bit larger playing field to work with, but not too big to where you can't reach over into the center of the table. So that's unique. And of course I wanted a heavy duty table with a two inch resolution. There is not a table on the market that exists that has that. So I made a table that has 1,756 holes. That means that this table has the most holes on any fixture table out there. The three quarter hole is the largest hole that you can put on a two by two grid pattern. And this table is one inch thick. Why did this table get designed as thick as it is? And that comes down to rigidity. I wanted the sturdiest, least flexible table on the market. So by running some CAD simulations and in cast iron, I ended up with these eight inch tall sides. Because this table is a giant piece of cast iron, this allowed me to have a four sided table. And this is a great feature because it adds to the rigidity of the table, but gives me a 90 degree corner to do some fixturing on. It also allows me to butt two tables together. It allows me to use the full length of the table, which means put fixtures on the edge and use it as a stop or extend the table surface out by bolting them to the side. So I can go up or out, which is extremely handy when you need just a little bit wider table is to put the fixtures on the side. This is going to give us the maximum rigidity, but still allows me to sit at the table and get my knees underneath of it. So all these things come together to make what I think is a perfect table. I wanted my table to be mobile, so I chose legs with wheels. It's also height adjustable to fit my comfort if I want to sit at the table or stand. The wheels provide me the mobility that I need to get the table out of the way when I'm doing filming around here in the shop. If you're going for all out accuracy, I have two more leg choices available. One is a fixed length leg and the other leg is a telescoping leg so that you can adjust the height. Every leg is fitted with an adjustable leveling foot so you can perfectly dial in the tabletop. So I know this table might be too large for some spaces, so I've made a smaller version. Look at this gem. All the same quality, same holes, same build construction, but on a much smaller size. So this is a 30 by 60. This was designed to have a two by four foot project on the table with room to spare around the outside. It has all the same legs, same holes, same material, 
just in a nice, neat little package. All you need to be able to do to combine the tables is just bolt it together. Let's give the table a quick wipe down and we'll throw the straight edge on top and see how flat it is. I'm gonna run this test exactly the way I did in the table review and then we can compare it to the others that I tested earlier. And remember this gold standard for aerospace is two thousandths of an inch in a two by two area. That's their tolerances. Let's see if we can beat that. What I'd like to try to do is get this table to flex. This is gonna simulate rolling it on the floor and then stopping it and then going to work. It's in its worst condition. So I'm gonna raise all the legs up and getting them off the ground. So even though that these table legs have wheels, they're still adjustable. So I'm gonna make them all float except for three. Okay, so now we're tripoding. So this is a worst case condition and now we'll measure it. If I see some sag in the middle, this is to be expected. It's about 65 thousandths. So there's a 16th of an inch, approximately a sag right there in the center. So let's rotate it around, see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. That's its maximum deflection, 75 thousandths. Twist, being on three legs, that's pretty good. Okay, now let's see how flat we can actually get it. Three thousandths won't go underneath. There's a couple places I can kind of get the one thousandths to go. But really? I mean, how much flatter do you need? This is almost too flat. And it's on four legs. Okay, let's go the other direction. Oh, it's, that's a beautiful thing. You know something's flat when the straight edge doesn't rotate on a point. This table is flat, man. So for comparison, for the requirements for aerospace, in a two foot long straight edge or a two by two square, two thousandths of an inch flatness. And we're doing two thousandths of an inch over nine feet. That is insane. This is more than any welder needs. So yeah, this table is by far the flattest welding table that I have measured out of all of them. We're able to achieve this flatness because it's machined on a gigantic gantry mill all at once. And I'm super happy the way that this table turned out. The bar was set. I just tried to jump over it. This is just a general overview on how the table works and all its components. But I'd also like to provide more detail on all the components in a little bit smaller videos that you guys can find on the Fireball Tool website, such as the tooth block, maybe the clamps, how they work, and why did I choose a three quarter hole size for the new Fireball table system. So I look forward to bringing you guys that information and I'll see you guys on the next one.